What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing, coming back at you with another video, and today it is a snow day, but I have sent off my aquabiomics test, and this is the second part of the video where I'm gonna put some bacteria in this tank to see if it changes the biological makeup of the tank and the microbiome of it. So I have some awesome products that I bought, and we're gonna do like a test to see if this actually does what it says it does. So let's get into this. All right, so the products that I got are this natural rebiotic from Fauna Marin. I got the Bacto balls from Fauna Marin. I got this and yeah. this and this. Bacto therapy from Fauna Marin. Bacto blood from Fauna Marin and Bacto energy from Fauna Marin as my son is trying to say what I'm saying. Say Fauna Marin. Fauna Marin. <laughs> Fauna? Marin. 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 Good job. All right, so let me explain to you what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna dose it, and we're gonna see, because Fon Marin has all these crazy instructions because they're kind of really cerebral with how they do things. So let's start off. So this is adding one heaping teaspoon for every 400 liters twice a week for four to six weeks. So I'm gonna put two heaping teaspoons of this in twice a week for four weeks, but I'm gonna need to let this sit in a bit of aquarium water for one hour to kind of like dissolve a bit before I dose it to the system. Now there's nothing in here about turning off the skimmer or anything, but I'm gonna probably, you know, put it on feed mode so the skimmer cuts off for 20 minutes. And um, this is supposed to really help with old tank syndrome. There's a bunch of other things that it does, increasing water uh, clarity and quality and help adding, um, you know, more health to the living rocks and stuff in the system. All right, so these are the Bacto mm. balls. These are supposed to help make your water clearer, more healthy water, nutrient control, reducing ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and phosphate. So we're gonna be testing that and it's supposed to help clean up any organic waste. Now for this, we're going to do a half dose initially because that's what it says to do. And you're gonna do this every two weeks. So my first dose will be eight balls in the sump for two weeks. And then the second dose will be um, 16 balls in the sump. And these balls are super tiny. So they go a long way. All right, now these next two, the Bacto Blend and the Bacto Therapy, these, they recommend kind of dosing them together. And the dosing instructions are kind of, you know, interesting, so I kind of summarized it. Now for my tank, I'm gonna do 30% of the recommended dose uh, because that's what they say to do with older tanks um, and when you're first starting this product. So day one, I'm gonna do 24 milliliters of both products, so 24 of Bacto Therapy, Bacto Blend, Day two, 24 milliliters. Day three, 24 milliliters. Then I'm gonna wait three days. And then um, after that, it'll be one time a week, I will do um, 12 milliliters of both of them. And then after that, I can go to weekly maintenance doses of just seven milliliters each. So kind of a difficult thing to comprehend, but these are also supposed to help reduce pollutants in the water. And it's gonna help with, you know, um, there's these different types of enzymes that are supposed to help with uh, nitrogen types of bacteria to reduce you know, your nutrients. So there's gonna be a lot of nutrient reduction in here. Hopefully my phosphates will reduce. My nitrates are never a problem, but it's always those phosphates that are getting me and we'll kind of do a test before and after to see where we're at. And last but not least, this is probably the most vague, you know, claim item here. This is Bacto Energy, which is specialized food source for nutrient reducing bacteria. So you're supposed to add this to the tank with those other bacteria products to kind of like energize them to allow them to populate more. So this is going to be a uh, daily dose for the reef tank. And then I'm gonna do, um, you know, two milliliters of this. And I was gonna do it weekly, but you know, it says to daily dose, two to five milliliters, you know, per 264 gallons. So I might do, you know, two milliliters uh, once a day, just to kind of see where we're at with that. And this is my crazy schedule on how I'm gonna keep this organized. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get dosing this and then I will let you guys know 
how it all goes and I will send out another microbiome test from Aquabiomics at the end of a month because Aquabiomics will be sending me another test because I did that, you know, pre and post dosing thing. So we're gonna see, do these Fauna Marin products actually add biodiversity to the tank and help change that microbiome? And then I'll do a comparison of the before and after microbiome testing. So I will see you in a month. Please like, comment, subscribe, because this is actually kind of a very expensive project. And I'd like for you to stick around. All right guys, so my Aquabiomics results just came back last night and they're pretty interesting. So let's see what all this Fauna Marin bacteria dosing has done to my tank. And my new results. So let's look at the new results and then I'm gonna compare with my old results. So if we look at my tank biodiversity and my balance score, my biodiversity is at 75, at the 75th percentile now, and my balance is at the 62nd percentile. Previously, on my old test, it was at the 87th, but my balance was at the 52nd. So, overall, I would say that, it, I mean, when you're at the 87th percentile, you can't really go up much higher for biodiversity, and I think the balance is probably gonna be more important, just me, my personal opinion, I would rather have a more balanced tank than a ultra biodiverse tank because you don't know what's in that diversity score. It could be bad things are in that diversity score. So the balance is much better, a little bit better, I would say, not significantly better, but here's the breakdown. Now, this is extremely interesting because <clears throat> you can kind of see my sample here on the new test has Vibrio much, much lower. Now, I had incredible amounts of Vibrio. Incredible amounts of Vibrio. So, without a doubt, and look how Pelagia, Pelagia bacteria has increased significantly. So, by using the Fauna Marin program, you can, without a doubt, say that you increase your pelagic bacteria and causing Vibrio to decrease. Now, one of the main things is no one really knows how to decrease Vibrio. Did I just figure out how to decrease Vibrio by, you know, stumbling across it? Maybe. Is Vibrio a huge problem? I don't know, but it's interesting. So if you guys like that, well, if you have a big problem with Vibrio like I did, you might want to try doing some of this Fauna Marin program. Now let's keep on going down with my new scores. So you can kind of see, you know, excessive family and pelagic bacteria. Yeah, I don't know if that's, you know, a bad thing. Um do you have some deficient families so let's look at my old result you can see excess excessive vibrio <clears throat> excessive vibrio is not here on my new one and then the rotor and the ultramet monder i don't know I, come on guys give me a break i don't know how to repeat all this stuff but you can kind of see the um fauna marin program doesn't have any rotor or this in it but it might help with the development of the Flavobacteriaceae? Might, I don't know if that's in there or not, but we'll see. So my nitrifying bacteria on the new test shows my levels are pretty good, ammonia oxidizing uh, microbes, you know, doing pretty well. Um, noticing now that this has decreased, this was one of the bacteria strains on my old test, and now it's not really there on my new test. Well, we'll see. I don't know where it could be. It could just be a... I mean, look how E9E014. That's extremely small amounts. I don't even know if they could pick that up. But the nitrite oxidizing bacteria, about the same, you know. Nitrospiraceae, about the same. No concerns there. This is what everyone wants to know, and this is what I've been wanting to know. My new cyanobacteria reading. Boom, one cyanobacteria group, one. On my old test, four, one, two, three, four. So, am I confident enough to say that Fauna Marin can help reduce cyanobacteria if you're using this program? Yes, with other caveats to that, and I'll get to it at the very end. So, you can see on my old test, four different areas that were, um, you know, impacted by cyanobacteria look at that level significantly higher than what it should be boom it is what is that like half of it 
yeah, we dropped down a whole decimal place. Yeah, so less than half. It's like a quarter of what it was. So the population of cyanobacteria reduced by a, a 75%, essentially, which is awesome. That is what I've been looking for. Now, if you look at the fifth fish pathogens and the coral pathogens, on the new test, we have Vibria fortis. Yes, fish pathogens are still going to be there. Photobacterium damselae, that was still on there. Sorry if I'm butchering all these names. But look at the coral pathogens. Now, granted, these are in super low concentrations on the old tank, so average level is this. Um, we can see that I only have one coral pathogen, and it is... Aquaterix showery, so your level prevalence, I don't know. This was never on there. Did I just introduce any new bacteria? No. Did I introduce, well, did I introduce any new corals I could have that bacteria on it? No. Did I introduce any new fish? No. So what that means to me is this coral pathogen has, pro the fish pathogens have already been here, but this coral pathogen here was probably initially in my first test over here, but it didn't pick it up because it was in such low levels. Now, the interesting thing is my levels of coral pathogen went from 0.348 and 0.151 to 0.19. And then they weren't even picking up. So the Acrobacter uh, SP type, they were able to pick that up at 0.348, and now it's at 0.19, so about half of what it originally was. And this type of bacteria, which was probably high enough to be, you know, detected, is not in there. I have no idea what that bacteria is, like that coral pathogen, but it's not in there. But this new coral pathogen is a little bit higher. So, interesting concepts. Let's pull it off of this, and you guys can see... Um, my thoughts on what is going on. Okay, so my final thoughts on these Fauna Marin bacteria dosing that I've been doing with my tank. I would, based off the data, I can say for a fact that Vibrio decreased in my tank. Is Vibrio that bad? I don't know. You know, I'll let people who are smarter than me about microbiology pontificate on the harm of Vibrio but it reduced Vibrio and it reduced cyanobacteria. So I can almost guarantee you if I sent off another ICP test today, well, sorry, Aquabiomics test today, that they would show even less cyanobacteria in my tank because I'm keeping my nitrates up and I'm reducing my phosphates. And what I'm doing is I've already introduced a ton of good bacteria to it to allow, you know, the natural biology of the tank to take hold and kind of beat back all that cyanobacteria. Am I always gonna have cyano? Probably, yeah, but I'm doing much better at beating it back and using more of a bacteria approach and not using the whole chemically method. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this experiment. I was able to get some good data, kind of supporting my claims and realizing like, hey, this cyano problem and like some of these coral pathogens that I, you know, thought were in the tank, were in the tank, but I've been able to beat them back and I've been able to just kind of realize throughout the course of this, like there really isn't a substitution for good old fashioned elbow grease. So what that means is I kind of got to get in the tank more and blow off the cyano, get it out of this system and add more nitrates to the tank. Cause obviously you saw how high my nitrifying bacteria levels are. They're awesome because of all this bacteria dosing I've done. So they're getting depleted more than the phosphate. So hard work water changes, blowing off the cyano with manual removal, and keeping my nitrates and phosphates in ratio where I'm gonna have to start dosing even more nitrates than I did before, which I've already upped the dose by doubling it and it still is barely registering. But overall, I'm happy with the tank. I'm happy with the direction it's gone. It's taken me a long time to get here. There's always gonna be little things I'm gonna wanna tweak here and there. That's kind of what makes this a hobby. And I'm glad I did this experiment. And I'm glad I could show it to you guys. So if you guys are struggling with like cyano, do what I said first. Before you send out all these ICP tests, well actually, probably send out an ICP test to see if your testing parameters are, you know, in check. 
but increase those nitrates, decrease those phosphates, make sure they're at a 100 to 1 ratio, make sure that you are manually removing that cyano with water changes, blowing them off the rocks, getting it into the water column so it can go over the overflow, getting skimmed out, change out those filter socks, change out that quilt batting, increase that skimmer production, and get some of those levels back into check. And that is probably what I would say to help anyone else out. But now, that is the end of this bacteria dosing journey. I will never be dosing bacteria again. I have enough bottled bacteria to last me for a while. So, I might be giving it to some of my friends, helping them out because right now, I'm really happy with the stability in the tank. It's probably always good to have something on hand. This Fauna Marin uh, bacteria dosing method has been wonderful for me. And I could not recommend it more if you're trying to you know, get some things under control in your tank. So guys, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment below, and let me know how you like this video. And as always, I will see you later. <laughs> Are you going to say something, Daniel? What's up, Daniel? What? Daniel, you got to talk. What do you want to do? I want to push the Push the red button? Okay, push the red button. All right, here's Spencer. And Daniel. Push the red button. All right, both boys in my lap. Now what do you want to do, Daniel? I want to push the red button. All right, push it. Oh, gosh.